except Naaman the Syrian. All of the lepers that were in Israel. But how come a Gentile was cleansed? All of the widows that were in Israel. How come a Gentile woman was called upon? Why send the prophet to a Gentile? Why send healing to a leper who is a Gentile? Jesus is saying because Israel had gotten so callous, so indifferent, so casual, so common. There was a perverted sense of entitlement. We are laws. Our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, uh, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin, the 12 tribes of Israel. These are our fathers. There was such a perverted sense of entitlement. There was such an apathy. There was such an indifference so that when it came to the things of God, when it came to the move of God, when it came to the word of God, when it came to the exploits of God, they were so used. They had grown generationally, generationally accustomed to seeing the hands of God. They boasted in their religion. They boasted in their, you know, in, in their, in their, uh, in their pride concerning who they were. They pointed to the laws and the statutes and the judgments and the commandments commandments and the feasts. They pointed to when God brought them out of Egypt and God parted the Red Sea. They, 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 had, a, they had history. They had a pedigree. They, they, they had, they had a, a, a heritage, a godly heritage, and they pointed to that. So over time, they became more callous. Their hearts became stony. They scoffed at the things of God. They profaned the things of God. They, they moved into idolatry and paganism. And, and false worship and polluted and contaminated the things of God. And it became a cauldron and a hodgepodge of, of idolatry mixed with perverted worship. And, and God had to deal with them incessantly. Over time, they became indifferent and no longer honored the things of God. And God said, yes, you're my people. I have not forgotten the covenant that I made with Abraham. But you are not acting like a covenant people. You are behaving like a harlot who cannot be faithful. You are playing the harlot under, under every green tree and under every high hill. That's what he says through Jeremiah. I've sent my prophets to tell you about yourself, but you killed my prophets and you will not change. You have spiraled into an abyss of idolatry and whoredom. You treated me like I'm nobody. You scoffed at my prophets and at my laws. So you know what I did? I, I, I'm showing you something. There is a people, while you were on the, on the side, being indifferent, there was a people on the outside who were estranged from the commonwealth of Israel, who were estranged from the covenant of promise. They had no pedigree. They had no, they had no, uh, 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 no connection uh, to Abraham. They have no affiliation with you. They are Gentiles, but they believe me by faith. <laughs> you saw me personally. They only heard of me. You know what happened when Joshua and the spies go to Jericho. What happened when they happened upon uh, Rahab? What did she say? Which is that we heard of you. We heard of you. We heard about what you did to all of your enemies. We heard about your God. How was it that a Gentile, a harlot, a madam could speak out of her mouth with more faith than the people that God chose himself, who've seen the exploits of God personally, but yet they would not believe. We're as grasshoppers, they are giants to us, and we are grasshoppers in their sight and in our own sight. But that's not the report that Rahab have said. Rahab said, we know, as a matter of fact, the, the men who are here, their hearts melted because of you. They heard that you're coming and they know about your God. The people of God, Rahab gives a report that seemed to be indicative of what the Gentiles were all collectively hearing and believing. They didn't know God. They knew about God, but they wanted God. 
And so when Jesus comes thousands of years later, he finds the same indifference. He's met with the same uh, apathy. He's met with the same cold response. He's met with it. He says, Jesus, he, the Bible says at one point, he began to marvel because of their unbelief. He says, how could, how could God be among you and you still not see it? All of the prophets and all of the priests, they all pointed to me and you still can't see it. But there's a people that sees it. That's why I say John chapter four, verse four says, and he must needs go through Samaria because although inside in his humanity, he is, he's the savior of the Jews. He's coming for his people. But at the same time, in his divinity, he understands that what Luke chapter 11 says, it is true. And a certain man had two sons. God is not only the God of the Jews, but God is also the God of the Gentiles. Salvation is not just for the Jews but salvation is also to the Greek, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. Jesus says to the woman that said that the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from the master's table. What does Jesus say to her in response? He says, oh woman, great is your faith. He says, be it done unto you. A Gentile who says, yes, they may be the ones privileged at the table. Yeah, salvation may be for them. Salvation may have originated for them. He says, but really, that's okay. I don't have to be sitting at the table <laughs> to be at the table. She says, the dog God eat of the crumbs that fall. What they reject and what they refuse and what they take for granted, what they spill, what they cast aside, what they pick apart, what, what, what they say, I don't want this, I'll take that. I don't, the, 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 this they don't want, we'll take. What they, what they cast aside, we'll take. Ah, ah, Elijah the prophet, who is that? I, he, I'll, I'll receive him into my house. And when the man of God says, feed me first, she does it. Because she believes by faith. Why? Because at the end of the day, salvation is by faith.